What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. So before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to a couple of subscribers, uh, quite a few subscribers actually, who have shown love to Too Raw for TV, aka Too Raw for Sports. All right. Much respect to Cruiser Nation Three for the five dollar donation via the Cash App. We left a note saying Merry Christmas, Big Dog. Thanks for your work. Absolutely, man. Much respect to you for showing love once again to Too Raw for TV. And uh, I did take Christmas off. Wanted to just enjoy that time uh, with my family. You know what I'm saying? I uh, didn't want to do too much that day. But I am back today. And I will be putting out content. For, so I want you guys to look out for that. All right. Also want to give a shout out to Teron Wiley for the $10 donation via the cash app. He says, Brooklyn needs Aiton. Keep up the good work, bro. Well, you know, the thing about the Brooklyn Nets is um, you never know whether or not it's, it's for real, but they do look better. And there were some stats that I saw that kind of made me think, well, maybe, maybe, you know, it was Steve Nash the whole fucking time. I mean, there was other things involved. Don't get me wrong. James Harden, punk ass, and some other shit going on, you know, and, and they did fuck up when they blew the whole team up, which was stupid, and that was KD's, and to a lesser extent, Ky uh, Kyrie Irving's fault. But a lot of this shit was Steve Nash because ever since Jacques Vaughn's been the head coach, I saw a startling st a statistic that showed that ever since Jacques Vaughn has been the head coach, they have the best record in the NBA. I think they're like 18 and 7 or 19 and 7 since then. Um, they are top 5 in offense and surprisingly top 10 in defense. When before that, they were the worst defensive team in the NBA. Or damn near. So shit, if they actually have a championship window, shit, I say go for it. It ain't like Durant getting any younger. So if they play him exceptionally well, and Aiton, you know, he don't want to be there in Phoenix. They don't want him. So I'm just saying, like, there might be a possibility of getting him. He shows up your defense even more. He gives you an interior presence. He can give you a guarantee. He probably going to be inspired to get the fuck out of Phoenix. So he might give you 20, you know, in, you know, in Phoenix. He might give, I mean, excuse me, in Brooklyn, he might give you something like, 21 and, and 10 and a half. So, that's just a possibility. Anyway, much respect to you for showing love. Big respect to the brother Elijah with the $50 donation via the Cash App. It says, donation to the channel. Much respect to Elijah, man. He's been subscribed to this channel since 2015, man. He goes all the way back. So, Wanted to shout all of you all out for showing love to the channel. All right, so the Lakers. Despite LeBron James' 38 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists, were not able to overcome the Dallas Mavericks. And they lose 124 to 115. The Mavericks are now 18 and 16 on the year. The Lakers fall to 13 and 20, all right? And um, at the end of the day, it's over for the Lakers. It's over. It's over, and nobody's fault but LeBron, Ramon, James. I'm sorry. Now, to be able to put the numbers up that he's putting up at age 20 on the surface, those numbers are impressive. But once again... As I said last year, they're not impactful. <clears throat> and if anything, they're even less impactful. The field goal percentage looks tremendous. I think he's shooting up to 48, 49%. The field goal percentage looks great, but it's misleading. It's misleading if you watch LeBron play. LeBron gets a lot of his scores right at the paint, uh, excuse me, in the paint or right at the bucket. He gets a lot of his scores right at the bucket. And 
even though LeBron has lost some athleticism, he's such a freak of nature that even at age 37, a few days from 38, he's still six foot eight, six foot nine, 280 plus pounds. He's what one of the top three heaviest players in the league. So I mean, it, this ain't the NBA of the 20 years ago when you had giants in the paint. You know what I'm saying? So the the centers are smaller uh, because of the, the nature nature of the game. They're not bruisers. So Le- whatever the league's just not as tough. So LeBron going down the, the lane, um, it, it's just not the same. He's he not going to run into the Charles Oakleys and Charles Barkleys and Xavier McDaniels. You know, you don't have these enforcers. You don't have the goddamn Maurice Lucases. You don't have, you know, th- these types of players anymore. So at the end of the day, you know, guys like LeBron can run rough shot driving to the paint. So he gets a lot of his buckets in the paint. As I've said before, ooh, about 60... 64 to 65 percent of his points for his career have come in the paint at the foul line. So, when you look at that strength, and you look at the fact that he shoots a lot of uncontested threes, because defenses would rather still at this stage have LeBron shoot a three rather than him driving. But anyway, I'm I'm kind of going too much into that. At the end of the day. The Lakers are in a fucked up position. AD is out indefinitely. I don't. We don't know when the fuck he's going to be back. I saw some reports saying he may be reevaluated in about another week. No one AD. He's not coming back anytime soon. I tend to believe those reports saying he's going to be out at least three weeks, uh, three months. He's not coming back anytime soon. And uh, you know. The Lakers are screwed, man. They're screwed. Around this time last year, the Lakers were a couple of games above 500. Now they're already seven games under 500. They won 33 games last year. At the rate they're going, I'm not even sure if they're going to win 30 games this year now. Um, Without AD... All is lost. And to the idiot that keeps fucking blaming Russell Westbrook. Oh, man, the team, is he just janky and he's bad luck and all of that. Well, we got to remember, LeBron was the one that went to management and changed the fucking team up. Westbrook wasn't there then. LeBron was the one... That, that broke up that fucking team. LeBron was the one to try to make them the Golden State Warriors. Remember that? They got rid of fucking JaVale McGee. They got rid of fucking Dwight Howard. They brought in old-ass Marcus Gasol. They brought in Schroeder. They brought in all these offensive players. They got rid of Rondo eventually. Remember that? That was before Russell Westbrook got there. And they lost in the first round to the Phoenix Suns. So some of you dudes got this unnatural hatred toward Russ, man. I don't know what it is. But at the end of the day, nah. All of this shit is LeBron's fault for the most part. Now, the whole 10-year window since Jenny Buss has owned this team, it's on her. And she's a failure. And she doesn't get called out. Because she's a fucking woman. And she's a white woman. So she's not going to get called out the way that if this was a, a brother. If this was a brother, everybody on YouTube making videos talking about how he need to be fired and shit. They already doing it to Michael Jordan. And he's the greatest basketball player of all time. In most people's eyes, right? So look, at the end of the day, all of this shit about... Uh, he needs help and all that. Like I said before, my, my feeling on this is he he has the he has the green light to, to keep putting up 25, 26 shots a night. He's he's concerned about his numbers. He's concerned about that record. 
you can't have it both ways because you're obviously playing for individual statistics at this point. Stop acting like you really give a fuck about winning at this point because I'm not concerned. I mean, I'm not really convinced that he really cares about winning like that. I think he would like to win. But at this point, I think LeBron is more concerned about fucking getting numbers and records and milestones. That's what drives him. That's what he talks about. Whenever LeBron James breaks a record, and I've seen him do this before, and this is when I realized that this guy only cares about his numbers. I've seen him break milestones in games that the Lakers have lost and lost badly. And he'll pat himself on the back and celebrate on his social media. When Laker fans are upset because they lost, he don't care. As long as he had a great game and as long as he put up great numbers, he could care less about any of that shit. At this stage of his career. But anyway, that's all I got to say about it, man. Tell me what you guys think.